Good morning everyone, welcome to is this day three of these vlogs. So uh, thank you very much for your support on them so far and the, the comments that I've had have been great. So I'll just keep doing them. Uh, today is a bit of a shorter day of practice really, because I've got some stuff to do this Arvo. Um, so I think really today, I think I'm just gonna go out on the course and try and shoot a score. So I'll probably play maybe 14 holes. Um, but yeah, the idea being that I'll kind of just play one ball and take it fairly seriously. And that might give me a bit of a barometer on, on what I'm doing well and what I'm not. And then this afternoon is a bit more of a relaxed one. I think the weather as well this afternoon gets very, very bad. So I'd rather not be stood in the rain. So I've got other stuff that I need to do, so I'm gonna do that this afternoon. I think these vlogs have gone quite well so far because like on two, two reasons really, it gives you an insight into what I'm actually doing when I'm practicing. For me as well, it gives me like a, a record of my practice and it, it kind of keeps me disciplined on what I'm trying to do. It feels like forever now that it's just been every, every time I've practiced, just been at the driving range, um, you know, on the mats. So it's been quite refreshing that I've been able to get out during the day and hit balls off grass because golf isn't played on a driving range, it's played on a golf course. And I think it's great during the winter when you can't, especially here in the UK, get as much time on course as you'd like to. I think it's great that there's somewhere you can go to just work on your mechanics, work on your swing, get that ready for when, you know, golf is actually playable in this country. Like I say, you're not, you don't put a score out on a driving range. Yeah, so thanks a lot for, you know, watching all my content, I'm really, hoping that you're enjoying it um, because anything more you'd like to see or anything less you'd like to see for example when you're doing yoga um, let me know and I can change it up a bit so yeah so uh, almost at the golf club now so what I'll do get my stuff out and uh, start playing some golf and I'll record as much as I can along the way try not to get crashed into by a massive truck Yeah, so I thought it might be an idea while I go around to go through my what's in the bag. Um, and I've put pictures of, of my clubs on my Insta feed before, but I haven't really explained why I chose those certain clubs. Now, obviously my bag is all Titleist stuff, but within that there's still, you know, discussion points on why I chose particular models. So as I go along and when the clubs come out, I'll talk about them. So yeah, that was a pretty good start actually. Really nice birdie. Um, so I think now is a good time to maybe talk about my driver. Uh, so I have the Titleist TS3. The stock, I have it at 8.5, but I've actually got that turned up to 10 at the moment just to increase my launch angle a bit. Uh, in terms of shaft, I have the Hazardous Smoke. And I have that in an X stiff. I think that's like the 6.5. Uh, I really like that shaft. It just feels so solid and it has a bit of weight to it. In terms of the club head, I went for that one over the TS2 because it has a bit more of a penetrating ball flight. Um, but honestly, I absolutely love that driver. I don't know, it probably isn't as well respected as some of the new stuff that come out, like the TaylorMade Sim, for example, or the Maverick. But for me, like you can't beat, it's just classic look and it's really penetrating ball flight for other brands, maybe TaylorMade. I would just be ballooning it. I get so much backspin on those clubs. That's why I love my TS3. Still going rather nicely, isn't it? Two under through three. Happy days. So let's talk about my irons. So I am currently using the new 620 CB. I have those from four to pitch and wedge. Uh, I don't have a three iron. I don't have a lot of use for a three iron at the moment. I have used one in the past, but the course that I'm playing at the moment, I don't really need it. Maybe when I go to Scotland, I might put one in. Uh, but I use those because I was previously using the AP3s, super high launch, um, super forgiving. 
I mean, great set of irons, but they don't really have the feel that I need. And I found it very difficult to work them. Now with these forge, you know, blade looking clubs, I feel like I can move the ball, I can hit it really high. I mean, I can hit bombs with them. Uh, I can also keep it low, I can move it right and I can move it left. And that's so important when you're trying to shoot good scores. Um, like I said, I love the AP3s, but I mean, these things are sexual. They feel amazing. Let's quickly talk wedges. So I carry three Vokies. At the moment I've got this SM7s, um, but hopefully soon we'll be getting the SM8s in the bag once I get them fitted in the bag. Um, I carry 50, uh, 48, 54 and 60 in three different uh, colours or finishes, I suppose they're called, and with different grinds that affect how I play. And it can get a bit boring talking about that unless you're, I don't know, Bob Vokie. I talked to Bob Vokey about it. I do think that the most important thing about wedges is having the versatility. So when you're looking at your wedges, I think it's really, really necessary to look at what kind of shots you hit. Now, Titleist have a really good tool on their website, or Voki have a good tool on, on their website, which is a wedge selector tool, which goes through your handicap, the type of conditions you play in, and your confidence. And I actually find that to be incredibly accurate to probably what you're looking at when you're, when you're, in, when you're interested in buying a new set of wedges. There it is, Luton, in all of its glory. It's a shithole, but it's our shithole. So three wood is the Titleist TS2 three wood. Uh, I went for this one because I find it a little bit more forgiving than the TS3 one. And like the only reason I need this is, you know, for a really long par five or something where I'm just really super nervous about hitting a driver. But I'm, I'm pretty confident with my driver, so I feel like I don't often need to. Maybe sometimes I have to hit it when driver might go too far. Um, but I absolutely adore this thing. I, I just feel like I can't hit it badly. Well, my putter saved me there, so let's talk about it. Um, Scotty Cameron, Studio Select Newport 2, one of the older school ones. I've probably had this since 2008. This is like the oldest club in my bag by far, but I mean, I have changed it, I've tinkered with putters in the past, but I always come back to him. He's, uh, he's my baby, he'll never go anywhere. Uh, so the only other club that I do have that goes in and out of the bag is a rescue. Um, like, it stays in the bag for most rounds, to be honest, but always useful to have just in case. It's the 818H2. Um, I don't use it enough to move into like a TS model. Uh, I am thinking about going into the two iron of the new uh, Titleist range. Uh, just something more penetrating. It'd be good for Scotland, actually. In terms of other equipment, Golf ball, number one all in golf, type Pro V1. Uh, I always go for the Pro V1, not the X. X is a little bit too high spin if I launch me. Uh, glove, always rely on tightness for those as well. Uh, lovely feel, quality leather. Tees, don't know, I've got them from Amazon, I think. Go through a lot of them. And uh, yeah, that's it really. That's everything that really goes in the bag.
no complaints there. I tapped that one home. So four under for nine holes. It's pretty good going. And I putted really well. I struck the ball really well. You know, game came together really nicely. So like I said, it was gonna be a short and sharp one. I've spoken a bit about my clubs as well. Uh, but now I've got, you know, things to actually do. So I'm gonna go and do them.